Hey guys, welcome to Tip of the Day. This is Virin here, and in this video, we will see what is the difference between IMAP and POP protocol. Why do we choose one over the other, and when do we choose one over the other? So I've come up with this small diagram here uh, to show you, you know, how both protocols work. So let's say you know, I configured my Gmail or Yahoo onto my Outlook client using IMAP. So this is how it works. My Outlook client or any other email client uses this IMAP protocol, connects to the service provider's uh, email, that is Yahoo or Gmail, and shows those emails locally on my device. When I say shows, basically it kind of streams those emails onto your device. But those, act uh, those emails are actually still residing on the provider's server. Whereas in POP, uh, what this protocol does is, if you configure your email client, that is Outlook uh, or whatever other client, that client, email client using this POP protocol connects to the provider's server, takes those emails onto your local device and then deletes those copies of the server. So this is how POP protocol works. Now, uh, if somebody is wondering, you know, why do we choose one over the other and when do we choose over the other, you know, like I mentioned in the video. Well, uh, let me just show you. I configured my Yahoo email using IMAP uh, just two days ago. All right, so this is my email client, that is Outlook, and I have configured my Yahoo email using IMAP protocol. So once again, these emails are there on the Yahoo server. Uh, these are just copies of kind of getting streamed here. If I go to email.yahoo.com and see the same emails are there on the Yahoo server as well. So once again, coming back to the question, if I can see the emails on both the locations, why would I want to configure my Yahoo email using IMAP onto my client? Uh, that is email client, that is Outlook. Well, imagine a few situations here. So let's say these are the situations that I could think of. Let's say you have intermittent internet connectivity. You, had, you just had internet for like, like say five minutes. And in those five minutes, you didn't get a chance to check all your emails. But what happens is, in those five minutes, this email client connects to uh, the Yahoo or Gmail or whatever provider server, and it downloads those emails. So now you can check all these emails at your own pace. Uh, the second situation, you know, you forgot to check your emails while you were online. Maybe you were surfing or doing something. And by the time you thought of checking the emails, you know, you don't have internet connectivity, connectivity anymore. But now you can, if you had configured your Yahoo or Gmail onto your email client, uh, uh, like Outlook, you can still check your emails because while you were doing something else, your email client was actually downloading those emails from the provider. So, and one more situation is if you want to work offline. So when you say work offline, so let's say you are not connected to the internet, but you want to send some emails and you don't want to wait uh, you know for the connectivity uh, to come back you want to use that time what you can do is you can draft those emails whatever 5 10 15 whatever even number of emails and you can hit send what what will happen is these emails will sit in the out box and the moment you come online those emails will be sent so let's just see this quickly if you go uh, at the bottom uh, you can see here my outlook client is connected uh, since i'm online what i'll do is I will disconnect myself from the internet. Now I'm in the same situation where I don't have internet connectivity, but I want to send a few emails. What I'll do is I'll say I'll open a new email. Let's say I will send it to myself. Test my send button. Okay, it's asking for the password. Now if you go here, that email is actually sitting in the outbox. Now, similarly, you can you know kind of draft as many number of emails that you want. Now, when I get the internet connectivity, what will happen is this email client will connect uh, to the internet and starts shooting those emails. So I will go back and I will connect myself to the internet. Let's see. So here at the bottom it says connected and it's already showing sending message one of one. So it figured out, the client figured out there were messages to be sent. Boom, that's it's gone. If I go to inbox, it will come back to me because you know I sent it to my CPU. This is one uh, thing that is helpful. And the fourth one is if you want to apply email rules and alerts that you use on your Outlook. Now this is something which you can't do on webmail. That is, I can't use rules and stuff here because I don't have much options here. 
So let's say I want to apply a rule that whatever email comes from so and so person, it should go to this folder and that folder. I don't have those options here. But now, since my Yahoo email is configured onto my Outlook client, I can take those rules and configure them here. So let's say I'll go to rules. I'll say create a rule. And this is where I can start configuring. I will say manage rules and alerts. I will say new rule. And then I can create a rule saying that, you know, move messages from someone apply this rule when the messages arrive I will give his email address here and then give instructions that these emails should be moved to send so folder this, this is the kind of stuff that you can do on Outlook clients uh, but not on the web mail now coming to the pop protocol now if I would have configured my Yahoo email using pop protocol onto this Outlook client then what would have happened is these emails that you see here they would have been taken out, I mean, taken off from the Yahoo server and then stored on this local machine. And then those emails would not have been on this Yahoo server at all. And imagine in case my system crashes or machine goes bad or whatever, then I wouldn't get those emails or I would have a very hard time getting those emails. So this is why I recommend, uh, you know, always use IMAP and, uh, but some people still use POP. Also, why coming to the last question that, that is, in what situations do we use POP and IMAP? So I've come up with a small information here as well. So once again, what is IMAP, which stands for Internet Messaging Access Protocol? Basically, you know, this is used when you want to access your email from you know, on anywhere that is on the go. So now you saw that I was accessing my email here. But let's say I go to a friend's place, I can still go online, go to mail.yahoo.com and so those emails are here. And uh, coming back here, what about post office protocol? The reason it is the three is because it's a, the latest version is I think uh, version three for POP, this protocol. So this is how POP works, is POP works, basically it takes contacts email provider downloads all the messages and then deletes them on the server which is kind of I mean I would say not good so now let's say if this was configured via pop these emails would have been downloaded here now if I go to a friend's place I wouldn't see these emails when I go to India because now they are locally on this machine okay then uh, a quick recap in IMAP, you can use multiple devices because the emails are just kind of streamed. They are not taken away from the server. Whereas in POP, you can only check on a particular device because the moment you connect to the internet and go to the provider's email server via POP, this protocol downloads those messages and then deletes them from the server. So emails are on the, still on the server. Emails are not on the server. They are actually on your local device. Now, Sent mail from IMAP client stays on the server, sent from POP client stored locally. What does this mean? So we just saw that, you know, I was sending some emails from here. Now, if you see here in sent items, it says test email, right? So this test email was sent using the Outlook client on my local machine. But this, cop this copy of this email, that sent email is actually on the server also. So if I go back to my uh, web mail and if I go to sent items, so if you see here, it has synced it, that same email I can see here. Whereas if I would have configured my email via POP3, any email that is sent from my local machine, that sent email will stay only on the local machine. When I go to the Yahoo server, I will not see that email in sent items because that sent was, I'm sorry, that email was sent through the local machine and it stays only on your local machine. So again, very risky. The last point, why do you want to use IMAP? Because if you want to access emails on the go, and I think that's what everybody wants to do these days. Uh, why do we want, why do we some, why do some people choose POP? Because they want privacy. The other thing is maybe they don't trust their provider. Let's say it's a very small provider and it can shut down their office anytime. So they just want to make sure that all the emails that they have, they don't want those emails on their server and they want those emails to be downloaded onto their local machine. So this was a uh, you know a quick 
overview of these two protocols i hope this helped you in some understanding uh, you know of these two protocols and if you still have any questions you know i'll be glad to see those comments on this video all right guys thank you so much thank you for your time don't forget to subscribe thank you bye